Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the second day of the International Symposium of Temporal Design. I'm very honored to present our first keynote speakers, Valentina Girelli from University of Bologna that will talk about the modern 3D digital geomatic techniques and their potential for the acoustic modeling. Good morning, thank you very much for the presentation and uh, for inviting me. Uh, so, um, a little overview of my presentation. First of all, I'll try to answer some questions. What is geomatics? Uh, what does it mean, 3D modeling? Why it's important, 3D recording and modeling? Uh, why and how um, could be favorable uh, an integration between geomatics and acoustics? Then I'll present two cases of study, and uh, um, at the end, uh, um, I'll do some consideration and some conclusions. Uh, what is geomatics? Uh, geomatics uh, is uh, a word um, um, that uh, um, um, express the union between geo and informatics. This new scientific term uh, was introduced by a French Canadian surveyor in, uh, um, in an article in 1981. Um, this uh, word expressed the integration between the traditional topography and uh, um, the new tools uh, and techniques uh, of uh, data capture, data processing, uh, data storage, and uh, uh, data sharing. Uh, geomatics uh, is uh, essentially the discipline of uh, um, acquiring, storing, processing, and uh, um, sharing geographic um, or spatially reference information. Uh, in this sense, uh, geomatics uh, um, could be seen as the first step of the knowledge of the space um, in, uh, um, in uh, many different uh, research fields. Um, but uh, which are the technologies and instruments that geomatics uh, use? Um, a classification, different classification um, um, uh, can be uh, done um, um, depends on uh, um, the object, uh, the accuracy, the technologies, uh, the, uh, the uh, requested uh, final products, uh, uh, the logistic uh, constraints uh, of the space, and so on. In this scheme, uh, I choose uh, um, to classify um, our technologies uh, uh, based on the scale of investigation. So, uh, for example, for the, uh, at a regional, at a uh, territorial scale, uh, we use uh, uh, remote sensing, uh, cartography, aerial photogrammetry, or uh, aerial uh, laser scanning. At the scale of the city, uh, we use uh, also um, GPS, uh, terrestrial laser scanning and the traditional um, topographic survey by total station. At the scale of, this, of the building, uh, we can use uh, uh, also traditional and direct measurement, uh, close range photogrammetry, terrestrial laser scanning and total station. And for a single object, uh, we can use terrestrial laser scanning, close range photogrammetry and 3D scanner. Uh, obviously, all the data, all the acquired data are uh, spatially referenced. Uh, um, which are the research topics and the activities of my uh, research group? Uh, starting from a um, territorial scale, um, we can have, uh, for example, remote sensing, uh, satellite images, 
for uh, um, environmental monitoring, for disaster management, and uh, um, to study the um, uh, energy efficiency of buildings. Um, in, we have uh, an important uh, Horizon 2020 project in Antarctica, for example, in order to study the uh, current ge geodynamics of the northern Victoria land and, uh, the, um, um, and to study the um, old glacial bodies. Uh, we use uh, geomatics for the definition and, man in, and uh, um, maintenance of the International Terrestrial Reference Frame and for the analysis of uh, geodetic uh, networks. Um, we uh, control uh, the phenomena of uh, ground subsidence in uh, Emilia-Romagna region and especially in the center of Bologna. We uh, use uh, geomatic uh, uh, techniques to uh, monitor structure and environment, for example, landslide, or uh, in this case, uh, um, we use the topographic surveying and geometric leveling to, um, for the monitoring of the so-called cold bridge of Calatrava in Venice. And uh, in, um, in cultural and cartographic heritage, uh, we can use, for example, you can see uh, the fountain of Neptune, the point cloud of the fountain of, of uh, Neptune in Bologna, above ground and underground, and uh, this is a axonometric repre representation of uh, all the architectural elements of the basement derived from, by a laser scanning 3D model. Especially in uh, archaeology, in cultural heritage, in architecture, uh, 3D modeling uh, um, has become an, a very important research field in many scientific areas and for very different applications. Robotics, navigation, medicine, body scanning, uh, civil engineering, reverse engineering, industrial inspection, gaming, cinema, entertainment, cultural heritage. Um, what is 3D modeling? 3D modeling is the complete process that starts with the data collection and ends with a virtual model in three dimensions, visible interactively on a computer. The um, uh, 3D recording and processing workflow starts with uh, with the data acquisition by different uh, sensor and platforms. Uh, after the data collection, the processing uh, is done through specific software and algorithm, um, commercial, um, scientific, uh, free or open source. And the final M is the generation of a uh, photo textured or colored 3D model of my object. Um, by, the t by the 3D model, I can also obtain uh, other uh, final products, uh, other derived final products, as for example, measurements, uh, section, segmentation of particular parts of uh, the object. Uh, and uh, uh, today, it is also possible to share my 3D model uh, within specific uh, solution or platforms. Uh, geomatics provide um, instruments to um, generate dense and accurate 3D model of object. Um, uh, usually, we, um, this instrument differs from other uh, techniques, as for example, the, par the parametric modeling or computer graphic graphics method that uh, uh, in general uh, are not based on real measurements. Um, uh, the uh, geomatic techniques are based on real measurement of my object and uh, uh, we can have uh, uh, two different approaches. Uh, the um, 
active approach, the uh, range-based te techniques, as, as for example laser scanners, or the passive, a passive approach, the so-called image-based techniques, the photogrammetry, um, and uh, um, uh, the two techniques, uh, or an integration between these, these techniques, um, uh, uh, is able to generate dense and accurate uh, 3D model. Um, the shoes, uh, shoes, to choose which is the best technique, which is uh, the best instrument, which is the best processing strategy, depends on several factors. Obviously, the first is the budget, the time, logistics constraint of my space, the object size or, or the uh, shape complexity, the requested accuracy, the requested final product. Uh, but what is uh, the 3D value added? Why uh, 3D is uh, today so famous, so uh, used? Um, uh, as uh, uh, said before, laser scanner and digital photogrammetry allow for generating textured 3D model, thanks to their capability um, to combine in a product, my 3D model, an accurate geometric information with a rich uh, photographic description of my object. Um, the final products of the processing, the, uh, for example, a 3D point cloud or a mesh, a surface, um, provide a rich quantitative and qualitative description of the object, permitting to make measurements, section, vector drawing, modeling of uh, uh, simple geometric shapes, uh, structural studies, uh, physical replicas, uh, and uh, evaluation of uh, colors, decay, materials, and so on. Um, so, in many, in many cases of study, are available um, photo texture and 3D model um, is the base uh, um, of a process of documentation, study, analysis at, at uh, a higher level than that uh, allowed by traditional methods in different research fields and in multidisciplinary projects. For example, in architecture, uh, 3D surveying of existing buildings uh, is important for study, documentation, structural analysis, and uh, all the data, all the collected data, can be um, uh, managed, for example, uh, together with other information in an historical building information model. Uh, uh, nowadays, uh, we have uh, also instruments with sub-millimetric uh, accuracy uh, that permits uh, to study, uh, for example, uh, the mm, microgeometry of, uh, of the surface of road pa pavements, or, for example, the comparison between the 3D model of two different epochs allows to uh, derive metric uh, quantitative information about uh, the uh, decay evolution in, for example, this is um, uh, an hour application, in uh, outdoors brick, brick mensury. Uh, but, uh, for example, um, why geomatics uh, uh, can support the acoustic modeling? Uh, acoustic models are used to study and evaluate the acoustic quality, quality of uh, uh, indoor environment by means uh, of uh, parameters, as for example, the rever reverberation time, the early decay time, and so on. Usually, the input data are the geom geometric characteristic of uh, the space and, uh, material, and the material properties. Usually, this uh, information um, derives from existing plans, for example, sometimes, only sometimes integrated by uh, direct measurement, or, for example, from uh, literature. But this data can be incomplete, 
not uh, up to date uh, or inaccurate. And uh, this fact can, uh, um, can um, um, create uncertainties in the uh, acoustic modeling. So, um, the study of the influence of material and geometric as assumption on acoustic simulation is today an important research topic. Um, in this slide, I quote, uh, uh, for example, uh, an, a work, an article uh, about the influence of uh, uh, the these two factors uh, on acoustic simulation in uh, two ancient theaters. In this work, for example, three different uh, 3D models uh, with uh, different uh, level of details uh, are used in Audion software in order to study the accordance between uh, the measured and the simulated uh, acoustic parameters. And the test shows that uh, that uh, the simplified model uh, showed the biggest, the biggest difference between uh, simulated and measured acoustic parameters, showed that showed the only the detail model is able to reproduce some trends in acoustic properties, and showed that uh, to improve the modeling, the material properties have to be better characterized. Um, in order to um, explore um, this uh, research uh, uh, topic, um, we, my group uh, has a collaboration with the group of acoustics of the Depart Department of Industrial Engineering of the University of Bologna. The main research topics of this collaboration uh, are the, integra the integration of the modern 3D geomatic techniques for the generation of 3D model of theaters and acoustics space to support the acoustic modeling, the study of automatic procedure for the geometry reduction of uh, the um, 3D model by geomatics in acoustic modeling and also the conversion of the data in a format suitable for uh, um, the uh, acoustic, model so acoustic modeling software, study about uh, the analysis of the micro, micro geometry of the surface uh, to help uh, the characterization of the acoustic parameter of the materials, um, uh, 3D interactive acoustic simulation, extraction of the surfaces topology, typologies, and uh, uh, semantic object labeling in 3D point clouds. Um, within this collaboration, we are working about two different uh, cases of study, different in uh, size, in object size, in uh, complexity, in uh, acoustic properties, and uh, in intended use. The first case is, uh, uh, the, is uh, the, um, this theater, the Teatro Comunale di Bologna. Um, in this case, the geomatic uh, surveying uh, took uh, five hours. We, uh, we made uh, laser scanning by uh, nine different scan positions with, uh, with the laser in vertical attitude and also um, mouse number and also um, with the principal access uh, horizontal by a special cradle, cradle in order to acquire also the ceiling of the theater. And uh, uh, we realized uh, 19 scans. Uh, and uh, after the phase, uh, this is the uh, processing flow chart on the right. And after, after the phase of uh, scans uh, alignment, uh, we obtained a point cloud of 500 million points uh, with an accuracy of few millimeters. Um, uh, Mm, after uh, one important processing phase was the cleaning of the point cloud uh, by uh, people, by us, by, uh, for, 
for example, uh, um, instruments and so on. And uh, uh, at the end of the process that took uh, three days, we obtained a point cloud of the theater uh, of uh, seven million points with a post spacing of uh, five millimeters. Um, these are examples of section obtained by the uh, 3D point cloud, and by the point cloud it is also possible to acquire the position and the shape of particular, uh, not easily miserable, for example, the scenery flats, the boxes, uh, making the model richer of details uh, important in uh, the um, study of the acoustic performance. This is the second case of study, the Rotonda Madonna del Monte. In this case, we use in integration laser scanning and uh, uh, digital photogrammetry. Some conclusion, 3D model of an object is a rich container of quantitative and qualitative information. Geomatics uh, uh, with uh, um, its techniques uh, allow for generating accurate 3D model, and these techniques permit to describe the macro and the, ma the macro and the micro geometry of uh, a space. Um, the data obviously have to be reduced and convert for the processing in acoustic modeling software and uh, uh, fully automatic processing is still not possible because the manual editing of the acquired data is uh, ever necessary. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much. So. Thank you. Okay, so there are some questions or comments? Thank you. Yes. Oh, it depends. It depends by the uh, number of the points, it depends by the complexity of the object. The Teatro Comunale is a very com complex uh, space. Uh, it depends by the um, uh, available hardware. So, for example, three days uh, of, for the processing uh, um, with, a, uh, with an ad hardware with uh, characterized by an average performance, okay? So it depends uh, by uh, several factors. For, no, because, for example, For example, this is us <laughs> during the survey. And uh, all these details are not uh, useful, not, uh, um, not useful for, the, for the acoustic modeling. Um, in this case, uh, have to be deleted manually by the operator. Yes, that in fact uh, I, I mentioned the 3D interactive simulation, for example. Yes. Yes, we, we will work about this uh, topic. Okay, so more questions? Okay, thank you. So much. Thank you. Okay, um, let's go further. Uh, we have now this, a session called Music Thinking. Um, I'm the chair, but also a speak, first speaker, so uh, I will start. Um, move here. Just um, I maybe would like to check the, au the audio because. Uh, before it didn't work, this, this one, okay, yes, yes, I think it, it is okay.
Okay, um, I will uh, start with a completely different, uh, oh, sorry, completely different topic. Uh, I'm musician and musicologist. I, I work in uh, University of Lisbon. Everyone can listen. And uh, maybe today we have uh, I introduced some uh, new uh, themes until now. So probably. It's be interesting to have a exchange between you and me because I, I work more with music and musicology and work with sound in a way. Um, okay, let's start. Um, I focus more in uh, experimental contemporary music. Um, so I, today I will present in 15 minutes just a few results of a test of listening that I carried out, uh, mostly in a really restricted area of contemporary experimental music, I will explain uh, later. But let's just introduce briefly um, a simple description, very, very rough, about perceptual study that in a way could be included between two different typologies that one, I would say, uh, try to assess um, a sort of um, parameterization and description of more regular uh, definition of timbres of sound, and they use they use some audio samples that are more simple sound or single tones or noises, and usually involve disciplines such neurophysiological study or psychoacoustic. On the other limit side, I think I can in in musicology we, we have a, a historical research on emotional aspect of music. Uh, of course, there is a great debate between a formalist, uh, cognitivist, emotivist, but this type and the type two of this type of study use audio samples that are comes from more from the, let's call Western classical music, popular music, or even in ethnomusicology, music, uh, music, uh, come from world music. What is um, strange to me still that there is really a reduced number of studies that work with field research and perceptual uh, studies that deals with experimental music. Uh, of course, experimental music can involve many genres, many styles, so it's difficult to, to give a definition and to try to study a specific uh, size of music, but what is paradoxical for me, is, it's really strange that, in a way, composers today uh, are really interested to the perceptual aspect of their composition, of their pieces. I don't, I don't want to say that Beethoven is, was not interested in the perception of these symphonies, but it's, it is sure that today con composer and performers are really focused on the, and their compositional practices even are addressed to a sort of perceptual intention. Uh, in a way, they're really interested in perception of contemporary experimental music. So, in my point of view, it's really interesting to try to, at least musicologists and scholars, try to work with this material in a much more flexible way. Uh, I show you here. I work with these pieces. Um, I prepare a list of short sample from coming from these pieces. As you can see, there are pieces come. I mean, um, much more come from academical um, context. Like the first two are. Austrian composer that are, let's say, could be labeled as uh, post-spectralism, second generation of spectral music. There are also two Italian composers, Giovanni Verrando and Riccardo Nova, that mix electronic sound and traditional acoustic composition. The first four um, um, pieces are written composition, while the last three are performers that are not uh, coming from, let's say, underground context. It's always difficult to divide this, this type of uh, communities, but um, there, are the, there are this Finnish duo that was uh, working a uh, couple of years ago. 
that work more in electronic and analog electronic music. Uh, Rio Jikeda is a Japanese performer, and Raimi is a duo, British duo, that move much more in techno and dubstep. So, as you can see, there is a really a large, in a way, selection of pieces, but uh, here I listed a series of common perspectives that put together these pieces. So I, I in, instead prepare this list of pieces um, that can be brought together under a common understanding of sound as it was a sort of substance. They work with, uh, uh, with microtonality, with um, interaction of sound, they work with spectral, um, in a way, the, the spectrum of, of sound. So they explore not, not the form or the melodies, but much more the substance of sound. So I extract nine excerpts, nine samples from these pieces, and I ask people to, and, and I show how he's the, the questionnaire that I, that I prepare. But I, I just would like to show you quickly some music that I was talking about, I'm talking about. Okay, this was uh, Georg Friedrichs in vain, as you can uh, probably recognize. It's a piece for 24 instrument. It lasts one hour, so it's something really very well composed and uh, organized in a way. And then I skip a little bit because I don't have so much time. So I show you quickly this piece. Okay, um, I, I go further just to, to give you an idea of what is the material uh, that I'm, I'm studying. So, the test was simply organized in two tasks. I, I try to extend to trained and untrained listener, so try to expand as much as possible. The first idea was to ask people to sort, to group the small sample, indicating the criteria of, of sorting. So I didn't provide any, any other restrictions, so they just have to organize in a way and explain how, why they organize in this way. The other task is to, use, to try to associate to each audio sample a given list of semantic descriptors. There are sort of adjectives that can describe uh, music in a way. So I just described quickly the result. Uh, this is image related to a sort uh, is the sorting task and just to represent the correlation between couple of samples. Uh, so the thicker is uh, the line, the connecting line, the higher number of participants associate the respective pieces and, and you can see of course there is a strong association between pieces of the same com authors of course because the main criteria was the, the recognized instrumentation. So people say, okay, this is orchestra music, too. let's put together these samples. But there are also some other criteria that are indicated with the red arrows, so that people also try to join together pieces, extract, that has a sort of similarity, not not in the type of uh, sources, not in a recognized instrumentation, but other, other aspects. So it's, it was quite, in, quite interesting, this result. I, can, I go further quickly to the task of semantic descriptors, uh, and probably everyone, everyone knows this type of, of the use of this adjective to try to express or to, to, to give a report to the perception of, of music, and of course, in some cases, these adjectives are used in a random way. Actually, as you can see, 
a, some adjective could be associated more to a sort of affective or emotive uh, impact of music, let's say, and other maybe describe better the structural or, or the, the sound itself. Uh, so I try to, 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 to focus much more on structural semantic description, but uh, that I show you quickly some, uh, some result here. What was interesting is probably obvious, but interesting to confirm that untrained participants prefer more descriptors that are general, let's say static, rhythmic, and much more that those that relate with the effects of music, so hypnotic. And others, trained one, maybe to try to uh, succeed to handle better descriptor of behavior of sound and the quality, so the shending, ascending, sculptural, so it's, it, is, it is quite interesting to discover and to reveal this difference, there is still a sort of uh, boundary, a barrier that isolates the world of exploratory music. And this for musicology is always, uh, for me, is a problematic, uh, because people that uh, express some musical preference and also have a high familiarity of the pieces also succeed to have a good uh, report and music, so it's, it's a quite, even if I consider it a series of genres that in my point of view is, is quite large, in a way all these pieces are contemplated as a separate uh, area of music that untrained listener felt a little bit, uh, it, it is a problem to approach. I had uh, several feedback that give this, uh, this effect of isolation of this uh, world of uh, exploratory music. And of course, in a way, it seems more demanding to express verbally own musical decision, so the sorting task was more difficult than to work with a given descriptor. So, of course, to, to express, to say something about uh, what we are listening seems more difficult. Uh, but just to conclude, I go for, I finish just the, the last slide, and this is for me the most interesting point, is that from the sorting task, um, we have sort of different modes of listening. Of course, the results are mixed, so not, some participant mix some different approach, but in a way the majority use a, 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 a listening that I called analytic listening, that is based on recognizing instrumentation, I say orchestral sound, electronic music, and style. As you can see on the bottom, some example of taken from, from the test. There is also a part, 20%, uh, that, that focus more on effective listening, so they, they I, I define this, they, they sort, they categorize pieces describing pieces, joint pieces saying that, okay, this piece is tense or is aggressive, all these pieces can come together because they are dark, they have a dark atmosphere and so on. There are a mixture of, of this approach, but there is also a, the white one, the white part, there is a sort of I call it immanent listening, a sort of direct apprehension of musical form, in a way that some people, 20%, yes, give a sort of description of, uh, of what they were, they, they, were, they were listening. So actually, as you can see, they have uh, some interesting uh, report. So they have, okay, these pieces come together because our uh, punctual pulsation uh, superimposed, uh, there is background, so they can have a sort of description. And I must confess that this result for a musicologist is interesting because I see uh, that, I mean, in Western classical music there are convention, there are a sort of um, well-known structure also for an unexperienced uh, listener that can distinguish the theme, the first theme, the, the reprise, and also for popular music we have the refrain. So we have, in a way, conventional tools to deal with this type of music. In experimental music is always a problematic uh, 
way, way to approach this type of music. Of course, there are, there are uh, important studies that say that it's much more important to have just a sensorial experience and it's not need to give categories or give a sort of a grammar, invent, a, I'm not uh, saying that actually it's, it's, it's important to give uh, rules to something that you can just perceive as, a, as, an, as an experience of a sonic experience. But in a way, the presence of this part of, uh, of participants that try to, to just to give an account of what they're listening besides the, the origin, the, the sources, and the effect is, is important for musicological studies because maybe is a way to create new approaches for people because in my point of view, experimental music is always, they have, they have, they have, has a sort of problem of communication, of expanding towards a, a larger audience. So I'm looking for ways to create this connection between people that maybe doesn't know that this music exists and maybe could be really excited to listen to these new, new things. So I'll just conclude here and just uh, thank you for your attention. I don't know if you have comments or questions, but uh, please.
<laughs> Very um, Yeah, Ken Ito. Yeah, I think they will come from Tokyo University and talk from uh, talk about the dynamical fundamental of musical music thinking beyond the Dalembert stuff. Uh, and so, quite shortly, I'd like to introduce the outline first. Uh, so most of the tonal elements of Occidental music are defined by Jean-Philippe Rameau uh, at the beginning of the uh, 18th, 18th century, uh, contemporary with Jean Leland uh, d'Alembert, and uh, could be appreciated with a linear, discrete, and uh, reversible, reversible mathematical characters. But uh, uh, in the reality, in the physical and cognitive natures of music instruments and voices, human voices are highly non-linear, a continuous, not discrete, and irreversible. This framework of music thinking on the Jean-Philippe Rameau uh, has many blind spots. So we'd like to, I indeed uh, have started this approach after knowing uh, Dr. Ando on 2008-9, I think. I'd like to uh, start some framework about beyond the d'Alembert Rameau, beyond this means also beyond uh, Bourré's, uh, Grisé spectrals, and uh, shows some uh, new findings, very minute ones, but over the time dependent changes, dynamical instability, we call it, of music, quite fundamental, but, but, so, so, but still nobody, almost a very little number of people are mentioned of. And uh, the first, 
And this is a well-known Dalamberg web equation. This is a differential equations and the solutions are way well known those a uh, triangular sum functions and the linear combinations. And uh, this kind of way of thinking is quite suitable for, for example, Chembali, Chembalos, or Hapsi code, and so forth. Somehow, much better for the organs, because the organs, and the sound is continuous, uh, where they, those strings oscillations are dumping. And uh, lute, for example, this is one of the most popular instruments uh, of those days, uh, 16, 17 years, but uh, they are not so stable, and uh, not the pick, picking up the impact or uh, uniform, and so forth. And uh, uh, according and uh, concerning the violin, clavier, piano, or uh, all of music, and uh, with or uh, even stars or something like that, and uh, symbols, they are not at all suitable for analyzing, uh, making any musical in between quotation analysis uh, based on the D'Alembert model. And, uh, and uh, second, uh, before there's a notation system of Western music. I'm translating a uh, solfege text in the, in the conservatoire at Paris, uh, a kind of thick book. <laughs> and uh, it started from something like this. Uh, apparent musical parameters is pitch and the proportional duration, dynamics are comparative for the pianist, most for and so forth. But there are no parameter in timber, changes of timber. And there are no exact parameter with the rhythm and the phrase. Rhythm means, for example, uh, we have to write, for example, waltz and uh, 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 waltz and uh, mm, I'm so sorry, the word doesn't come. Uh, if, and, uh, rhythms in three meters, for example, um, uh, Walter and uh, Andro. Andro. That's okay. Sorry, indeed, I'm a little bit, I'm an old man. <laughs> My memory has gone. Uh, so, Lentla, for example. Lentla is a uh, form of uh, dance and jig, uh, lentla, or passacaglia. Everything is in uh, three meters, but uh, we have to write down almost exactly the same uh, sub notation. And uh, only give words this is a world, this is a passacaglia, and so forth. And then there are no exact parameter in rhythm and the phrases. And the uh, notation of Western music, apparent music parameters, pitch, proportional duration, uh, mostly in binary order, uh, fours, eights, and so forth. And dynamics are comparative, uh, just I have mentioned. And uh, Western notation of the system came from Christianity. This is also a very important point. Progresses of uh, notation, music thinking, and the natural philosophy are quite parallel. Uh, they have common root in harmonia, very ancient, rooted from the ancient Greek, uh, Roman, <laughs> and the Middle Ages, and after the, uh, so the modernization, harmonia mundane, or a musica instrumentalis, musica humana, and so forth. Indeed, uh, for example, Tallino is a very important figure in Italy, and uh, he, his, one of his pupils is uh, uh, Ingenio Galilei, is uh, Galileo Galilei's father, or uh, his uh, the son's very close friend, Kepler. They are uh, two and the founder of so-called modern uh, science, but uh, they had much to do with uh, so-called harmonia mundi. And uh, so the music thinking or harmonia study is indeed uh, one of the main uh, issues of so-called uh, science at the, at the very beginning of it. And the present system of notation was established in the 18th century. D'Alembert, it says D'Alembert M. Yeah? <laughs> it is a direct application of uh, the Newtonian equation to the motion of a uh, string. And the Ramos choice is not only corresponding to the D'Alembert himself, but also whole Newtonian picture of natural world. And uh, it roots still now, 21st century. This is a modern point. Uh, this is also clearly, uh, this also clearly says there's a fundamental limits 
of present music notation. They are corresponding to D'Alembert. And uh, much more, for example, uh, within his uh, presentation, many so-called experimental music, but uh, we can't write down them uh, exactly. And the uh, human uh, ability to create music or listen to or appreciate music is much beyond so-called uh, limitation of notation. This is very important for me. In real music making, uh, we musicians are working in every detail music on the bass, on the basis of notation. Music is written and we play. But uh, almost always beyond the notation, interpretation is most important. And the music making and music making is ruled by subconsciously, uh, by notations. Notation rules music, the limit of music, music thinking. And uh, so great developments in uh, physical science during the 18th and 19th century, for example, uh, Joseph Fourier is uh, no doubt one of the most important figures in the whole science and technology. And uh, he is a, uh, the, I cannot see, uh, no. Contemporary is a, con, uh, a contemporary of Ludwig van Beethoven. That, uh, there is almost nothing, and uh, very strange is uh, uh, people are known as Dirichlet. Dirichlet is a mathematician, and he is a brother-in-law of the Mendelssohn Bartoli, <laughs> composer, pianist, conductor, a violin player. But uh, in, in reality, they have almost nothing to do with uh, some such music making and so forth. And uh, my idea from now on, I will show you. Is that the first came to me. Uh, on uh, 88, uh, with a discussion with uh, Luigi Nono, composer, uh, who had only once came to Japan. And I have written a uh, letter when I was 21 to him in uh, Venezia. And uh, he kindly wrote me back, and he, with an invitation to the Santri Foundation, he came to also, also to our university, and they have uh, some lecture. Uh, I was at that time. Uh, Student and also ten years ago, I have some disc uh, discussion with uh, Ilya Prigozhin. Prigozhin was uh, a physicist, but uh, known as an irreversible process and so forth. And uh, so Prigozhin had uh, stressed the music as irreversible process. This is very very important. And also uh, after getting my PhD in 1999, I have pursued this with mostly three with three, no two people with Pierre Boulez on one thing. But uh, this is about uh, the conducting technique Boulez. Ito technique of the so-called angular dynamics. This is very, uh, for me, important, but uh, today I have, uh, today's lectures are something different. Jel Jirigeti gave me something, some idea, but uh, I hadn't worked with him. And Karl Heinz Schockhausen was very, uh, very pushing friend with me, but uh, he had passed away. And after his sudden death, I have started uh, this. And uh, the fundamentals of my approach is a uh, applying uh, Ando or a Manfred Freda Yoichi Ando's model of a self con, uh, on autocorrelation function to music making. And uh, this time, I'd like to show you some example for the so called timber. But before that, I have started this work with uh, Massimo Gara, especially for the concert hall. Five, five minutes left? Okay. Okay, so I'd like to show you some uh, examples. This is what uh, a photo I have made, uh, taken, just over there <laughs> this morning. And uh, can you read this? This is uh, Largo Respighi. <laughs> and uh, Largo Respighi, I would like to try one. No problem. <laughs> and uh, so and it's not easy to read some feature from this cholerogram, but uh, this is a correlation function analysis. Otrino Respighi, Angeti Tante Paliuto, suite number three, Passacaria. And uh, uh, this is a very quite ordinal uh, spec program. And uh, those from those uh, cholerograms, we can uh, uh, correct and then uh, calculate uh, so called correlation function parameters, and they are very, very important, especially tau et is important, but uh, there could be several different definitions, and I dare do not uh, give any of them, because uh, two years ago I have given many, too many, and uh, discussion with uh, Professor Pompori Koki was a little bit too much complicated, but uh, something like this is very important. And uh, also something like this, 
I try. Inferno. Canto 1. Nel mezzo del cammin di nostra vita mi ritrovai per una selva oscura che la diritta via era smarita. And no, everybody knows about this Inferno Canto 1, Zella Divina Comedia, the Dante Alighieri. But uh, also the speech has many, many uh, complicated structures. But uh, as a, the Wiener Hinchin theorem assures, uh, the short term, a, uh, short -term uh, integration of such a correlation function analysis of the, all the information of such spectrogram. And moreover, the time dependent changes were including. And that we can uh, find some fine field dynamical approaches for music making. And so I have discussed with a, a composer, Gerald Grise. Uh, just our, after our conversation, he had passed away, very missing. But uh, so my question was, uh, do you think to apply the so-called uh, spectral approach to harm a voice or a human singing and so on? And he had oh, no, nothing. And he had passed away. So I have started from this point and uh, solved some so-called Sprechgesang uh, problem uh, given by Arnold Schoenberg. Well, uh, 20 years ago. And uh, after that, I was appointed to present position of professor of composition conducting. And, uh, but uh, today, I'd like to show a very uh, simple sample of the so-called different uh, timbre of a string instrument, position ordinario, and the sul ponticello, and the sul tasto. I may let you listen. at the edge on the bridge. And instable. This is very important. Very soft. But not only soft, also here is a dynamical instability. It's very important. This is the point. And uh, this is a well-known uh, spectrograms. And uh, we can easily uh, calculate spectral and uh, colorograms, uh, time-dependent changes. And uh, not only spectra, but uh, changes of time-dependent uh, deviation of a spectra is quantitatively clearly seen, at last in something like this. And uh, this is also violin. <laughs> I quit this. It's not so easy to find any change. Or this is somehow uh, the in uncertain. But uh, in such a calculation, we can see these uh, uh, fine uh, motion. Or this is an uh, Sutasso's case. And uh, not, not only showing figures, we can calculate every minute features of something like this. And I skip this, but uh, tau e t is very uh, important. And the fluctuation plays a fundamental role of such things. And also, Every attack has also such a dynamical transpositional processes. This is very important. And uh, uh, for a short, uh, they, uh, just I have shown and uh, make you listen the examples of the violin sound, but uh, they are uh, kind of examples. But in real a performance, for example, they are used, mixed in the content. This is a fragment of a performance by my student, one of my students. And the uh, so correlation function analysis can show something like this. And also applying some uh, uh, reverbs or something uh, digitally, we can listen uh, something like this. And also. This is digital. <laughs> and naturally, the values of tau e. The 
difference of sound character. Everybody can very easily listen or and, uh, recognize. And uh, with uh, Professor Ando's methodology of Tau E or dynamic change by Tau ET, we can precisely evaluate. And uh, not only evaluate something, but uh, the most important thing is for me, I'm composer and conductor, so ensemble making and uh, unmasking technique is very important. Segregation and uh, popping up technique is also very important. Coherence and the harmonization technique is also very important. Dynamical techniques for a deeper expression, just like I have shown in uh, Tigana's case and so forth. And the dynamic clang farbe melody, this is uh, the terminology by Alon Schenbelk and I have worked on this. This is also very important. A summary, in conventional music meditation has limitation and uh, we have done something and uh, we'd like to do something continuously. <laughs> That's it. The most important point is specify the issue clearly and make the music better within the limited time lengths of duration of a, in a rehearsal, so forth. For example, Pierre Boulez, his rehearsal is very strict and short and everything is clear cut and uh, everything goes very nice. And uh, I'd like to do some more <laughs> beyond his, what he has done. Uh, is it my, this could be my one answer. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. I think we should go further. We don't have sure. to, but in case we have, can continue discussion, uh, so sure. you have some yeah. questions. Yeah. Okay, so I would like to invite. Uh, <laughs> the next speaker, uh, Marcellino Garau and Michele Congiù talking about score of architecture. Okay. Good morning. I'm uh, Michele Congiu. Uh, I'm an engineer and I worked uh, on, um, on my firm in the field of um, building construction and interior design. Uh, now I present uh, a research between uh, architecture and music uh, with a musician, uh, Marcellino Garau. Um, this is a, the beginning of a research uh, between sound and uh, architecture, sounds and, uh, uh, and space. Uh, the temporal aspect is an important element in the concept of constructed space and not which can lead to new design developments. The analysis of our activities provides a, a series of ideas to design qualitatively better spaces according to our needs. This is because temporal analysis gives us a lot of information about changes of the rhythms of life, 
suggesting what requirement the cities, public space and also the interiors of our, our homes should possess to become more functional and more pleasant to be inhabited. This research score of architecture is a work in progress, a starting point of a work in which the temporal dimension fits into space researcher through the sound dimension. The reference to uh, the sound wall represents a possibility of strengthening through temporal development the dynamic component of space. For example, the possibility of living a space in a cycling way gives to the space a particular dynamism that can determine a great psychological comfort of living. To get these configurations, we have tried to rethink the compositional process in architecture taken from the musical context and terminology of the sound language. The core of this research is the appropriation of the time dimension within the architectural language and of space, space dimension within the musical language. Scores of architecture as a structure consisting of drawings, sounds and text. The hypothesis of space take place through drawings and audio tracks, interpreting the various aspects explored, while the texts outline can theoretical issues relating to the architectural and time compositional aspects. The, comp the contamination process widen and strengths the compositional process by exploring the complementarity between space and sound. In the exchange process, languages achieve such a level of interpretation that generates new analytical design devices. Architecture gets hold of compositional elements such as interval, scale, dynamics, performance, modulation, harmony, melodic development, alignment, downshift, and rhythm. Similarly, it is possible elements and terminologies that it already owns but in a rework key to be returned to architecture conceiving a musical architecture in which the time element is significant in the construction of the space idea. In this study, the description is not limited to the spatial composition of generic processes of the build but it also interprets the time dimension by proposing styles and types of use. The propensity to walkability within the spaces actually puts time dimension into the graph. The work does not aim at inventing future buildings, but communicating and planning purpose by looking to the linguistic structures of a possible architectural layout. The drawings and the compositions so far developed in the study do not refer to a recognizable built place, but only to a spatial structure that is defined in terms of internal relationship and may therefore be modified, enlarged or reduced on the basis of the needs. The choice of the compositional instrument based on mutual exchange between the two spheres therefore allows to transfer the architectural language from the graphic level expressing the three special dimensions to the musical one that intervenes and exists only within the fourth dimension. Leaving a space means taking up not only physically but above all temporally. Now this video to uh, try to describe uh, all the concept uh, of the work in progress uh, of this uh, research.
Okay. Questions? Okay, no, not the score, but uh, only uh, sounds. Uh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Um, uh, only a sounds and uh, um, a kind of uh, um, interpretation of uh, um, the uh, composition in music and uh, um, uh, what kind of uh, composition in music can uh, try to um, uh, describe the composition in architecture. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sort of, yeah. Parallel between sound yeah, and yeah. space. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. okay, so thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I think I think we are in time, so we have coffee break. If I'm if I'm right. Thank you for all the speakers to this morning and enjoy the competition.